All right, we've talked about all the basic kind of Java concepts. Let's get into some more advanced topics now. So this isn't too advanced, but let's talk about the idea of recursion in methods. So recursion is super useful in programming because there's a lot of times we have this major problem and you want to break it down into simple steps. You want to do it piece by piece. It's not different steps. You're just repeating the same steps multiple times. So to show an example of this, let's do a basic for loop and let's replicate that behavior with recursion. So if I were to compile and run this code right here, you can see we just get a loop that goes from zero to nine. So what if I wanted to create a method that did this same behavior? So let's create, uh, we don't need to return anything. We're just gonna print something out. We'll call it looper and we need to know where to start at. So integer i and also I don't wanna have to create an instance of this class so let's make it static and so now let's just replicate what this does the first thing it does of course is just print out the variable that we inputted so zero and then we have to add one to that to get to the next value so let's just do i plus plus and then we're going to call this loop again but we're only going to call it again if i is still less than 10 so if i is less than 10 then I want to call this loop again with the current value of i in it. Otherwise, don't call it, we're just going to stop. So let's now remove our for loop and instead replace it with a method called looper that starts at zero. I can run this right now and we get zero through nine. So this is what basic recursion is. We're calling the same exact method from within itself but you always want to make sure you have some kind of exit condition because if you don't you're just going to run this forever so knowing this we can use this to do more advanced calculations like calculating a factorial number and so for those that don't know usually a factorial number is represented with the number followed by an exclamation point and all it means is that we're going to take that number so four and we're going to multiply it by one less than itself factorial, so three factorial. And so four factorial, all that equals is four times three factorial. But of course, three factorial, that would mean three factorial equals three times one less than itself. So it would equal two factorial, or three times two factorial. And two factorial would equal two times one factorial. And so you can see all we're doing basically is four times three times two times one. One factorial would equal one times one minus itself factorial. So zero factorial. The zero minus one would be negative one and we would just keep going. We have to have a stopping point. So zero factorial is always represented as just one. So this is what a factorial is. All it does is you have a starting number and you just keep multiplying by one less than itself until you get to zero factorial. So I guess the, the main rules for this are if the number we have is equal to zero, then just return one. If the number is greater than zero, like this, then return n times n minus one factorial. So these are our two rules for factorial. So let's create a method that can follow these rules. So as you can see, to be able to calculate this, we're going to need some kind of recursion that keeps repeating these two steps here. First off, we have to return the previous value, so it's gonna be an integer. We'll call it factorial. You can call it whatever you want. And of course, then we have to have a starting position as well. So we'll use n for that. And so let's set up our rules. We'll say if n equals zero, then just return one because zero in factorial is just represented by one. Otherwise, we're going to return n times n minus one factorial. So let's do that. Let's do return n times n minus one factorial. But we don't know what n minus one factorial is. We would have to run it through this function we just created. So let's do that. Let's do factorial. And now we can get rid of this exclamation point. And there you go. This is basically how you could calculate factorial. Let's give this a go and then I'll explain how it works. So let's store the result of this and let's do factorial of four. And this should be four times three times two times one times one, which as you can see is 24. So how does this work? Well, first off, we're saying to get the factorial of four. 
And so what we're going to do is put 4 into here and then check to see if it's 0. Well, it's not 0, so we're going to skip over this code. And now we're going to do return 4 times the factorial of 4 minus 1. So currently, our first time through is saying 4 times the factorial of 4 minus 1, which is just 3. So can I put 3 here? Here, I'll put 4 minus 1 off to the side so that we can see that. So first time through, we're saying return 4 times 3 factorial. But we don't have an operator for the factorial, so we have to run it through our little function here, factorial. Our first time through is going to say return 4 times factorial of 3. But it can't return this until it knows what factorial of 3 is. So another instance, you could say, of this factorial method is going to be created to calculate this because we can't return anything until we find out what this value is. So a second method of factorial is going to be called with the value 3. And it's not 0, so we're just going to follow these same steps to return 3 times factorial of 3 minus 1, which is just 2. Of course, we don't know what... 2 factorial is, so we can't return this value until we find that out as well. So I'm going to put that through our method. So currently, as you can see, we're asking for the factorial 4. And so we start using it, but then this first method here is going to be like, um, sorry, I can't give you the result yet because I don't know what factorial 3 is. So just wait a bit. Let me find out what that is and I'll get back to you. So they call this method factorial 3. And it starts doing its calculation to find out what factorial 3 is. But then it says, oh, I can't find this out until I know what factorial 2 is. So hold on, method 1. I'm going to get you the answer, but you're going to have to give me a couple minutes. So then, of course, it's going to call another factorial method. And it's going to have an input of 2 because that's not 0. And it's going to do the 2 minus 1 which of course is just 1, so this is 2 minus 1 here. So now even our third method says to the second one, yeah, I don't know what factorial of 2 is yet because I don't know what factorial of 1 is, so hold on, let me get the result. So right now all these methods are on hold, just waiting for the answer, right? So method 3 is going to call yet another instance of this factorial with an input of 1. And so we're going to do 1, and then we're going to do factorial of 1 minus 1, which of course just equals 0. The way to get a factorial of 0, we have to put it through our calculator. And so method 4 is now going to say to method 3, yeah, I would give you the answer, but I don't know what factorial 0 is. So just give me a second. Let me call another person here to give me the answer. And now we can see factorial of 0 is just going to be 1. So it's going to just return 1. So this is with an input of 0 here. Now that it returns 1, method 5 can be like, oh, I know what factorial of, of 0 is. It's just 1. So I'm going to, to give you back 1 right here. And so now method 4 is going to be, oh, sick. Thanks, man. Now I know what factorial of 0 is. It's just 1. So I can do my calculation, which is 1 times 1. So all of this is now just 1. Method 3 is like, okay, thanks, method 4. Now I know that Factorial of 1 is just 1, and I can do my calculation, which would be 2. And so it can say, hey, method 2, I finally found out what factorial of 2 is. The answer is just 2. So it's going to put a 2 here, and this will go away. And then method 2 will be able to be like, okay, sick. Now I can do my calculation. Method 2 will say the answer is 6. And then finally, the last step here is now I finally know what factorial of 3 is, and I can do my calculation which is 24, and I can finally return that back to this original call. It said, hey, I finally found out what factorial 4 is. The answer is 24. So I'll put that into result, and then I'll display it. So as you can see, it's actually a lot of stuff going on here, and you wouldn't really want to have to code that all yourself. So that's how recursion works. Code for this will be in the description links. Thanks for watching.